healthy eating is something that I have set more goals for than I can count and failed at more than I can count too. A few years ago, I was about 15 pounds more than I wanted to be. I knew what I needed to do in order to lose the weight, cut back on the sweets. I have a pretty big sweet tooth and I've always struggled balancing having treats with eating too much sugar. I, I tend to not have a very good balance there, but today was the day. It was the start of a month. It was a Monday. I had gotten all of the food out of my house that was going to tempt me. I had had my last bag of candy before I was going to be good and strict. You know, my last day of freedom. It was the perfect time to start my new healthy lifestyle. I was finally going to be strict with my eating and weigh the weight that I wanted to weigh and look how I wanted to look. But then I had to leave my apartment to run an errand. And on the way home, I happened to pass my one of my favorite stores in my little town that sells some of my favorite organic candy. And at the time, my favorite of those was Justin's Peanut Butter Cups. And this store had a lot of those in stock right then. It won't hurt to get one bag, I reasoned. I could eat one or two a day. That's not gonna make a big difference and it can be my little treat each day. So I stopped and I picked up the bag and I took it home. And during the girls' nap time, I ate the entire bag. And it was no longer the perfect day to start my new healthy eating lifestyle. <laughs> Today, I just wanted to talk about some of the things I keep in mind when I set goals now, because it's a lot different than it used to be even just a year ago. And I also wanted to share some of my current goals with you. So a lot of what I do is drawn from the book Atomic Habits, and I'll link that down below. So some things that I keep in mind, I try to set goals that are within my influence. So an example of this, instead of saying, okay, I want to get an agent by the time I turn 30, I could say, okay, I want to start querying my book by the end of 2021. When I query and how many agents I query and uh, things like that are totally within my control, whether or not an agent actually signs me on is not. And so if I make a goal to get an agent and I fail at that, even though I've done everything in my power to reach that goal, I would still feel like a failure. And so I try to make sure that my goals are very much within my influence. I get to control how often I write, if I am part of a writing group, if I am querying my book, if I'm self-publishing. I don't get to control how many sales I get if I self-publish, if an agent picks me up, or if I get published. Things like that are, with, are not within my control. One of the things that I really focus on too is trajectory. It doesn't matter as much where you are now as it does where you are headed. And so I like to ask myself, if I continue doing what I'm doing right now, continue improving in the way that I'm improving right now, where will I end up in five years? So uh, like for example, with my, with my eating, if I were to continue eating the exact way that I am right now, then in five years I would be fairly healthy. But if I continue to improve in the way that I have recently with my eating, changing small habits to become healthier, then in five years I will have a very healthy lifestyle with eating. Tying back to the story at the beginning where I tried to just magically switch. <laughs> Another thing I keep in mind is that my habits are the non-conscious acts that I do. I don't actually think about them. The conscious decisions that I'm making are the habits that I'm trying to change or the course corrections in my trajectory. My trajectory actually comes from my non-conscious habits. Where I'm headed is based off of the things that I do without even thinking about it. Because my conscious capacity is limited, I focus on small changes that take conscious effort until I've mastered those. And then I can move on to more small changes that are conscious effort until those become non-conscious. And then slowly I will change my non-conscious habits consciously, but because, because my conscious capacity is limited, I have to focus on small changes. In this way, I can change my long-term trajectory with consistent short-term conscious changes. I use my bullet journal for my reading, writing, and kind of like YouTube, Instagram goals. So my reading habits or my reading goals are basically shown in my uh, TBRs uh, right here. And so I have these three dots are the three from my uh, yearly TBR list that I want to get to. And then I have a reread each month. And then I have a craft, a writing craft book that I want to get to. 
And the first one here is always my read aloud that I'm reading aloud to the kids. And then I can fill in the rest, um, just kind of going through the different lists that I have here. So like I do want to um, read books from series. So once I fill in the ones that I have marked, then I can go through and I can say, okay, well I have some left, I'm going to read some books from a series or I'm going to read a comic book. And then down here is where I kind of write down some reading and writing big picture habits or just even just tasks like um, put my print off my Rapunzel book for my husband to read. That might be like a big picture task that I can then check off in my bullet journal. But here is where I have my actual goals. And so I have my trajectory under each category. I don't have that for reading because um, I generally just always have a positive trajectory with reading. Uh, I have some really good habits around there. So I have, um, I write down my, my trajectory for writing and for social media. And then I write my, the, goal, the big goal that I'm working towards. So like right now I'm trying to write 2,500 words a week. That's kind of my big uh, goal, the destination that I, that I want to get to for writing. And then I write down systems that I have for it. So like right now, my system for that is to write as soon as I put my youngest down for her nap, I write 500 words. I do that Monday through Friday and that equals 2,500 words. Over here, I can write any changes that I want to make. So if I feel like I am doing well with the current system, or if I feel like the system is not working, then I can make a change to that. So like this month, I changed it to 500 words because before May, I was actually just trying to write every single day and I counted less than 500 words for that. And now I, uh, instead of tracking every day, I want to get to the 500 words every day, Monday through Friday. And I do that for social media as well. And I also have a spot just so I can put how many words I got last month, or in here I have like my best uh, YouTube video. My YouTube and Instagram trajectory are kind of neutral slash positive. I am slowly growing, but it's very slow progress. So, and my goal is to upload weekly and watch YouTube weekly. And my system is to use nap times to work on videos and to use my bullet journal to plan out videos. And the changes that I wanna make is this month to maybe choose a day to watch YouTube. I tend to get really busy and get going and then I end up not watching YouTube for a long time and I feel bad because I do want to be a part of the community and uh, support the channels that I really enjoy and uh, who I've made friends with. Those are kind of like my business type goals, I guess, since I don't actually make any money off of it yet, but I would love to someday make money off of my writing, use my YouTube channel to kind of let people know about my books and things like that. So. Uh, that's kind of like my business goals, but for my personal goals, my husband and I have trajectory meetings together um, basically every quarter, just every few months, uh, where we look at what we had um, wanted to change last time in each category and then sit down and we just have different categories so like that we look at and decide if we're positive or negative and then we will do one small change. And sometimes uh, my husband and I have the same change, especially under like relationship, you know, when it's like for our marriage and sometimes we have um, very different ones. So um, these are mine for this, uh, this uh, most recent quarter. Uh, under exercise, I have been doing a lot of squats throughout the day to prepare for labor and because uh, I know that's really good. So I wanted to start adding five pound weights to some of those squats just to um, kind of push myself a little bit more because uh, the squats are becoming a little bit easy for me just having done them so consistently. Under family or family time, we are on a positive trajectory, um, especially after the last one. The last meeting we had, we were on a negative trajectory because we were watching a lot of TV together. We would just turn on a show for the kids because it was easy. And now we do a lot better spending time together in the evenings. And so one of the changes that I wanted to make was to find um, a small amount of time, even just like five minutes a day, to do something with each of the girls individually. And uh, some days I, I'm doing really well with that so far and other days are harder, but I definitely think that I notice a difference in my relationship with them, just uh, setting aside that small amount of time. For example, my five-year-old loves uh, getting at her tea set as soon as my youngest goes to sleep so that she doesn't get water all over. So my five-year-old gets out her tea set, fills it up with water, and I'll sit with her for five minutes and have a little tea party 
and drink a couple cups of water with her and talk with her and then you know and that really helps her to feel special or the other thing that she loves to do is to come and help me cook stuff so if I'm making anything if I ask her to come and do it with me she loves to do that. The next category is diet and I'm on a positive trajectory here and my change I have been trying to get fruits and vegetables into my uh, diet be more proactive about that and so my change is to try and get at least three servings of vegetables a day. Some days I do really well, weekends I usually don't do as well. It can be really hard to get that many vegetables in each day. I think if I were to do like 21 day fix tracker, I have one of those on my phone and it actually suggests that I get four a day. But I'm going to start off with three and then we can work our way up from there. Under relationship or marriage, uh, we are currently on a positive trajectory. And the biggest thing that we need to work on right now is date night. We've gotten kind of lax with our date night and not been quite as proactive about it. Um, just kind of going with the flow and some day, some weeks not getting it in and things like that. And we still spent a lot of time together, but it's really nice to have a specific time set up, set aside for kid free time just for us, especially where we can talk, especially since my husband, he really hates talking and getting interrupted by the kids a million times, which always happens when kids are around. And so, so the change that we are making is to plan date night together on Sunday evenings. What we were doing before was, um, we would switch off and I would plan date night one week and he would plan the next week and it just hasn't really worked recently and so we're going to try this and I actually have a reminder on my phone so that we remember to actually plan date night together uh, at that time because uh, last week we actually forgot to do it so then I added a reminder to my phone. Okay and then under gospel I am on a positive trajectory in that area as well and the change that I want to do is to start doing some family history stuff with the kids, even if it's just reading about our ancestors at first. I want to do that on Monday nights after we have dinner together is kind of my plan. So we'll see how that goes. Finances, we're actually kind of on a negative trajectory with finances right now. We haven't been, I mean, we're not like going into debt a whole bunch or anything, but um, Ben's business slowed down quite a bit and we just haven't been as good on the budget since the beginning of the year. The first two months of the year I was, um, I had morning sickness and it was pretty bad and I'm never good at being on the budget then, especially with food and just since then we've just had a hard time sticking to the budget. One of the things that Ben wants to do, and this is, we actually have two things here because they are kind of one-time things and one of them is to have a finance meeting to remove unnecessary automatic payments and then the other one is to add a budget line for eating out because we don't actually have one right now. What will happen is I, I just fudge the budget every time we decide to get food, but then it's way too easy to decide to get food more often than we should, where if we had a set amount of um, like, oh, we have $50 this month to eat out, then, you know, eating out two or three times, then each time it's like we're actively, proactively deciding to spend that money and not just fudging it. And so that's kind of our plan to help with the budget a little bit because food is probably where we go off on the budget the most. Those are our personal goal categories that we go over each month. And I really love the trajectory idea because it really helps to look honestly at where you're at and where you're going without feeling too guilty about where you're at. It's okay to not be where you want to be yet as long as you're making those small changes to get better and it can be really motivating to make those small changes and see the results from them. I would love to hear how you set goals in the comments below and have more discussion about goal type things. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for lots of reading and writing content. And thank you so much for watching my video. I will see you in the next one.